Oh, hallelujah. That's what I want to share this morning about the living word. The living word, amen. The word of God is alive. Do you believe that this morning? So, Father, we just give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. It's great to be in the house of God. It's great to be able to just sense your presence. It's great just to, I don't know, be able to just be touched by the Spirit, I guess. Anybody else been touched by the Spirit this morning? I believe it's really, really good. I believe God is a good God. You know, in uh, 1 Samuel 3, verse 1, the word of, this is what the Word of God says. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. There was no widespread revelation. I believe we're living in a day when the word of God really is fairly rare. It's rare because it's been overcooked. It's been destroyed. It's been misused. It's been manipulated by the way that we want it to be. So the Word of God in the days that we live, and I believe that it's going to, as it says here, and it came to pass, the Lord began to speak. Because God wants to get His Word out to us. God wants to open us. And He began to speak because there was a young man by the name of Samuel that had an ear to hear what the Spirit of God was saying. I believe that God is raising up a generation. God doesn't use a man today like Samuel. No, he used many men, many women. But I believe what he wants to do is he wants to use his church. He said, I'll build my church that the gates of hate will not prevail against. I'm going to give my church the keys of the kingdom. That's what my church binds on earth will be bound in heaven. It's what my church looses on earth will be loosed in heaven. So just let me say it again. In that particular time, there was no word of God. The word of God was very, very rare. There was no widespread revelation. People didn't have an ear to hear. People weren't hungry for the move of God. Can I say this? And I, I want to just say it, not to for any other reason, but, but I believe that I am in the midst of a bunch of hungry people. I believe I'm in the midst of a bunch of people that are thirsty for truth, that want truth. But one of the things there is sometimes, no matter how hungry you are and how thirsty you are, Sometimes when the, the dinner comes, and we may not say, I don't like that. And that's what it's going to be like with God. We may not like what God's going to give us. But if you're hungry enough, you'll eat it, amen. And it'll do you good. It's not my way. It's not what I like. See, some people like it loud. Some people like it soft. Some people like it this way. Some people like it that way. It's got really very little to do with how I like it. It's what God likes. It's what God wants. So the Word of God was rare. And I want to just say it again because I want to build this on this foundation. And it came to pass, and it came to pass because there was a young man by the name of Samuel that had an ear to hear what the Spirit was saying to the churches. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I come today and I, I come before you with thanksgiving in my heart and I come... Father, believing that, that though we haven't seen the whole widespread revelation of what you're doing, we're seeing glimpses, as Tom said. We're seeing glimpses that encourage us to press on, to move in, to take hold, to lay hold of what, what you're going to do for us. So, Father, this morning I, I pray that, that, Lord, that that hunger that you would breed in us, that that thirsting that's in our soul, my God, that, that you would come in your own special way because, my God, we do. We have an ear to hear what your Spirit is saying to us today. And, Lord, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Hebrews 4.12, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. 
This Word of God is alive. Amen. It's alive. It's alive. Do you believe it? It's our attitude towards the Word that determines the place that God has in our hearts. It's our attitude towards this Word that really will determine the place that God has in our life. If we can embrace this Word, God can get a hold of us because this Word is life. And I believe that this Word, as we look at it, it should always be like as if the Father is speaking to me directly. Sometimes, you know, um, as you're reading the Word, and, and many times it may be like in an area that you may be struggling with, maybe having a little bit of doubt, you might be able to, having a little bit of whatever concern or whatever it might be. And as you read the Word, and though I might be speaking about somebody else of old perhaps, or one of the disciples, somebody, and as that, as that Word as, as, you, as you read those words, all of a sudden, they, something happens on the inside of you and you can claim that as if Jesus was speaking directly to you. It should never be like a, a message from an ordinary book. I'm not just reading stories about the days of old. I'm not just reading stories and, uh, uh, like, a, like a novel or whatever it might be. It's not just an ordinary book. It should be as real to you as if the Lord stood in the room and spoke to you personally. See, unless we, unless we come into this sort of thing, it can just become another novel. We can just read about the stories, and there's a lot of people that know a lot more about this book than I do, but they may not know more about what God is doing. You with me? I'm not trying to be proud. I'm not because you see, you can read this book in many ways. I can re read it as a living letter to me personally, and if I can do that, it will be real. It should be as real to you as if the Lord stood in the room and spoke to you personally. If we can do that, if something interesting will happen. You know, in John chapter 14, verse uh, 23, listen to this. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my fa Father will love him or her. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Just, just listen to this. Who's he talking to? Who's he talking to, sir, people? Who's he talking to? Me. <laughs> Who's he talking to? Me. Isn't that amazing? He's talking to me when he said this. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him, and he will come to him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. That would, should be so personal. That should be so personal to you as if you are the only person in the world. Got the dings again? It's got to become as if you're sitting at his feet and he looked down into your eyes and said, the Father and I will come to you and make our home with you. That's how personal it's got to be. See, God's word is real. This book is the word of God to you. It's impregnated with the very life of God. It's not just an ordinary book. It's going to open up again to Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read the verses that Tom read. The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. There is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Amazing words, amazing scriptures. No created thing is hidden from him. He knows all about you. He knows your needs. He knows your wants. He knows everything about you. And, and, he, and he desperately wants to come. And as we love on him, and as we love him, God just wants to come. Him and the Lord wants to come and make their home with us. Amazing thing. It's to him who we must give account. I hold in my hands this book, which is really the book of life. This is the book of life. It's got the very life of God in it, amen. The book is meant to feed my inner man. It feeds my spirit man. This book feeds me, amen. I pray that, I really pray that somehow or other what I'm sharing this morning can, can get inside us, that we can bypass all the rubbish and things that the enemy wants to put into our minds that you're not good enough or whatever it is. But you see, you're going to read some things in this book that's going to say things about the power of God and what God wants to do in these last days and what God's going to do. And you're going to think about, man, that, that couldn't be me. That, that, that couldn't be me because you, you know all about me. We just read a thing about you, you've got the, you know, the hidden parts of me. You know all about me. I'm naked before you, Lord. And I might have done something wrong, but I thank you today, my God, that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, can cleanse me and make me acceptable in your sight. Hallelujah. Because he sees me through the blood. Amen. He sees me today not as I see myself, but he sees me cleansed. He sees me washed. And he sees me whole. And he wants me to understand that as I read this word, it's living word, it's living bread to me. And it will speak to my inner man. It will speak to my spirit man. And it, as I read some of these scriptures, and as I read some things that God says about me, that instead of allowing the, the negativity or the negatives of life to get into my mind and tell me that I'll, I'm no good or I'll never make it, I, that inner man inside me will say, He's speaking to you, Neil. <laughs> and that's you. That's what you can do. You can triumph over the enemy. You can destroy the enemy. You can rise up in power and victory because he's speaking to you. I hold in my hands a book with the very life of God in it. It even cools you if you're hot. <laughs> book that feeds my inner man, my spirit. It imparts. This is the interesting thing, you see. How many people know that if you don't eat, you die? That's very deep. But if you don't eat this word, you'll die spiritually. You don't get hold of the word. You don't let the word get inside you. Because you see, when you read the word, it imparts into you. I'm going to use a phrase of Tom's. Are you getting this? <laughs> it imparts. See, as you eat natural food, you take something out of that food. Is that correct? It's not just food going in and going out. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> But something happens on the way through. 
and we take the nutrients and we take the whatever the energy and whatever it is, the good stuff and the bad stuff too, obviously. <laughs> but but the word of God, as you read it, it also imparts into your life. It will strengthen the weak parts of your life. It will empower you. It will it if we could comprehend for one for for a little while what this word of god represents and what it does inside us we would look at it and read it in a totally different manner to the way we read it and understand that that the, that it's like as if god was if I was sitting at his feet and the lord was just looking straight into my eyes and saying neil i'm talking to you you can do this you can do this I want to say to you this morning, you can do whatever God says. You can do it. Why? Because you're, as you read the Word, God will impart power into you. God will strengthen you. You can rise up. As you read the Word, you'll rise up and with power and strength. I can, I can, I can feel my muscles flexing right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Rise up, you people of power. The strength, the power, the anointing, as, you, as, as, as it's going to come into your life, it's going to do something deep on the inside of you. Imparts faith into my spirit that I might dare to believe, that I might start to dare to believe that whatever God says, He is able to do. And He who hath begun a good work in Neil is able to perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. And the words of prophetic, the prophetic utterances that I've had over my life and the prophetic utterances that this church has had over it, God is able to perform it. There's nothing that can stop it except my ignorance. But if I can get hold of this word and I understand that God's imparting power into me, He's imparting life into me, He's imparting uh, victory into me, faith into me that I might be able to believe. It's God's means of reaching me is through His Word. God reaches us through His Word. The Holy Spirit causes the Word to grow inside of us. The Word is working mightily. In Acts 19.20, it says, So the Word of the Lord grew mightily and prevailed. Oh, I tell you what, you need to write that word prevail down. Amen. It's not just a word that we preach and, or a word that we speak. I, I use this so many times because it's so very, very real. My budgery guy used to quote the word, but it did him no good. There's a lot of budgery guys. <laughs> It's broken the word, but it's not doing them any good. But you've got to understand that as a believer, the word of God will grow mightily in us and it will prevail, it will overcome. And you know what it's got to overcome? It's got to overcome the weaknesses of my flesh. Got to wait. I, you know, we, we're, I'm no longer a slave to fear and I'm no longer this. We can sing that till the cows come home. But until you get it on the inside of you and allow it to grow mightily in you and get the Word of God and find out what the Word of God says about that song and let the Word of God inside you, then it will rise up, it will grow inside you and it will prevail, it will overcome, it will triumph over the devil. It will triumph over all of his works. Destroy the enemy. It's God's means of reaching me is through his Word. The Holy Spirit will cause the Word to grow inside me. Luke chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus said, It is written. It's written, amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Somewhere along the line, when we, the Word of God that's in us grows when the enemy comes in what comes out of us is not the negative nature not the negative words that ah i can never do it i will never make it or blah 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 it said i can do it amen i will do it i will arise i will arise out of the ashes amen 
Whatever the enemy's poured out, we will arise. Do you believe it today? Because you're more than a conqueror. This book is the Lord's word to us today. It's the Lord's word to me today. Everybody say today. It's a now book. It's a now book. It's a now book. Do you believe that today? It's a now book. It's his voice. It's not just pages, it's his voice. It's his message. Though it was written many years ago, just behave yourself. It's just as alive and relevant today as ever. This book is just as alive today Yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. That's good, that's good, that's good. Psalm 107, verse 20, it says, Then he sent his word, and it healed them. You better make sure the one who prays for you has the word of God in them. <laughs> Mark 16, we just, I read this the other week. I'm just going to read it to you again. Mark chapter 16. Very, very simple, this book. Very, very simple. It's going to read verses 19 and 20. Uh, how about I read from verse 16? How about I read from verse 15? And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Preach, what's the gospel? The word of God. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Preach the gospel. Preach the word. It's up to you now who who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right side or the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Confirming the word. God worked with them because they had the word in them. God worked with them because they had the word of God in them. If they went out preaching something else, God couldn't work with them. If they weren't preaching the word, if they'd just gone out there trying to be nice, and, and look, I'm all for it today, I'm all for it, but friend, we just can't go out and, and just try to be nice to everybody. And think for somehow or other, people are going to say something to you that's going to, I don't know what. But everywhere we go, if you're going to give them a slice of bread, you've got to tell them about Jesus. Going to give them a cup of tea, tell them about Jesus. Because God wants to confirm the word. God works with the word. God works with his word. God worked with them because they had the word of God in them. If they weren't preaching the word, God couldn't work with them. I believe that revival will break out when we share the word of the Lord with people that we come in contact with. Now, that's another subject. You can be a religious idiot. Who knows who's met them? You don't need wisdom. You don't have to preach from Genesis to Revelation, the maps and the index. It may be something very, very simple. I've told this story before too. That a man that got born again in this church. And at the end of the service, and, and this man came forward and gave his life to Jesus, and the pastor came up to him and said, Oh, sir, tell me what part of my massage message <laughs> did the power of God come upon you to cause conviction to come into your heart that you gave your life to Jesus? 
And the guy looked at him and said, well, sir, I'm very sorry. He said, but don't want to offend you. He said, but I thought your preaching was very boring. I hope nobody's saying that here this morning. I, I thought it was quite boring. He said, you did? well, how did you get born again? He said, well, there's a little girl sitting beside me and oh, she's laying on the floor with a coloring in book. And she said on the, he said, on the top of that page of that coloring in book had the words, Jesus loves you. And as I read those words, conviction hit my heart. And I want, you see, you don't have to tell them the, who the man child is. They don't even know he exists. You don't have to tell them this or that. You just have to tell them that Jesus loves you. And there's a thousand different ways you can do that. There's many ways you can do that. Simple. Letting people, then, then, let, then they'll grow in the Word, and then they'll grow and they'll start to inquire and they'll start to ask questions. Preach the gospel to people that you come in contact with. I'm just going to read some things about God's Word. And we, we had before all these scriptures of, of, of different things, and you, you need to write them down. Can I? When, when you're reading the Bible, have a notebook beside you. And when, when something like that, even though it might seem so far away from where you're at, write it down. There's something about when you write it down. I, I write, I've got stuff, I've got reams of papers. I, <laughs> I look at them, I see all these scriptures, and you know, some I discard, and some I keep, and just keep, I've got that, many, that much stuff. Write it down. Something about when you write it down, it gets, gets into you. And so here, here's just a few scriptures that, I, that, that it's like as if Jesus is speaking to you. And for some people this morning that's in this place, perhaps one of these scriptures you might need. Johnny's got all the scriptures back there. He's got a list of them. If, there's, if you miss one of them or whatever it is and you don't know what it is, just go back there and you're throwing it in the bin already. <laughs> uh, he'll find it for you anyhow. And so God's word to us today, like as if you're, you're sitting at his feet and he looked down to you in Isaiah 41 verse 10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Now, I want to tell you, there's at least five people that really need to hear that this morning. Because some of you think the situation that you're in right now, and the, uh, the relationship or whatever it might be that you're in right now, it is impossible. But God says, fear not, for I am with you. I am with you. Be not be dismayed, for I am your God. Romans 8.31 says, if God is for you, who can be against you? Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, so you, if you've got a need this morning, you might need to write that down. Get hold of that. Philippians 4.19, write it down. Write it down. Put it on your... On, I don't know what you put it on. Put it on your heart. Psalm 121 verses 1 and 2. My help comes from the Lord. I'm just reading little bits. Psalms uh, 84 verse 5, My strength is in Him. Let the weak say they are strong. Amen. My strength is in Him. Psalm 62, 5 and 8, God is my refuge. These are living words which you can feed on them and will build you up. God is so powerful. God, God is so, so, so very, very powerful. The Word of God is alive. Let it come alive in you this morning. Let it find, out, find something there. Ask God. Let God reveal us. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what God wants you to do. And if there's areas that we've got to adjust in our lives, let the mighty adjuster adjust you. Amen. If you're having a problem with marriage, don't go to somebody that's had seven divorces and ask them about marriage.
Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, too too often we get bad advice from people that wouldn't have a clue. Wrong thinking, wrong teaching, wrong stuff. We got the Holy Ghost. We got the Living Bible. Hallelujah. We got the Living Word. Mm. My first page. Lord, will you empower us today so we will go out and impact our community? I want to be empowered to impact. The next page is the opening of the Christian Outreach Center at Wombai. 30 deacons distributing the emblems. 30 deacons. We had to buy the bread by the loaf. <laughs> and buy the juice by the gallons. You've got to keep something in front of you, the Word of God. God, will you do it again? God, will you do it again? I'm going to ask Tom and Deb uh, and um, Sharon to come up. Sorry, Deb. Deb, you can come up and pray for people too if you want. But Sharon's going to minister to people. We're going to minister in the power of God. If God's talking to you this morning and you, you need a breakthrough in your life, you just need to break through or something like that, just Reach out to him this morning. Let him touch you. Don't, don't hold back. Respond to God. Let, let, let us pray with you today. Let us minister to you today. Let us see things broken in Jesus' name. Let the word of God come alive in you. You have trouble believing the word of God? You know, get with ourselves that we can perhaps teach you or help you or whatever it might be. Whatever you need today. Let's stand to our feet this morning in here. We just work on that and just... Make sure that that's where we're at. You know, we just don't want to cut across what God's doing this morning. Just cut across. But if you're here this morning and you just need the Spirit of God to touch you or open something to you or, or whatever it might be, you might be a little bit like this pulpit. She needs, she's seen better days. <laughs> she has seen better days, amen. You might be feeling a little bit like that today. All you need is a couple of new screws. And you'll be as good as gold again, amen? I've got a man here that can fix that up. He's already looking at it. How can I fix that up? Just might need a couple of new screws and that's all you need. A little bit of adjustment here, a little bit of adjustment there. But just let the Spirit of God come this morning. Father, we just come before you right now. and We lift up our hearts to you right now. Father, we're just opening our lives. And if you're here this morning and, and you just need that touch... Why don't you just quickly come? Why don't you just quickly come right now? Come on, just come. Slip out of your seat and come. Just slip out of your seat and come this morning. Let the Spirit of God get around you. There's the young people. They want to come. Let the, we're supposed to be their example. <laughs> I love you guys. See, look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you make me so happy. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Who's going to join the young people? Amen. I love you all. I love you all. I think it's wonderful. Come on, folks. Come on. Come on. Let, let, I believe God's speaking to some people out there. Come on. Just come. Come, 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 come. Father, we thank you. 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 Father, we just want to thank you right now. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for these young people that are just surrendering their lives. They're just, oh, they're full of you, Jesus. They're just full of you. They just want you so much. Hallelujah. Lord, let them be contagious to the rest of us, my God. Lord, let us catch it. Let us catch it. Catch it. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, shakabundi. Hallelujah. 